Hello everyone, welcome to module four. In this module, we are gonna explore infiltration. So I'm gonna start by bringing back this image that we looked at in the last module. And in the last module, we were concentrating on the right-hand side. We are looking at water loss. We quantified and defined evaporation and transpiration. And over a long period of time, when we're looking at um, time scales of months or years, about 70% of all the rain that falls ends up being lost in evaporation and transpiration. We're going to switch focus now to the right-hand side and start looking at runoff. And we're going to first focus on the process that uh, moves rainfall precipitation from the surface into subsurface flow. And that process is infiltration. We're going to start evaluating this and quantifying this by starting with an example, which you can find this example in your handout. All right, so here's the example. We have a hiatograph shown here on the left, which again gives the intensity of the rainfall over time. This is a five hour storm. And it's derived from a rain gauge in the center of the shown watershed. And we wanna know uh, the total volume of runoff from the watershed of this rainstorm, okay? So I'm going to start here by trying by finding the total rain that fell in this five hour storm. So in the first hour, we had two inches of rain per hour, so two inches. Then the next hour, we had another four inches of rain, right? So now we're at six inches. Then in the third, between hour two and three, we had another six inches, bringing us to 12. And then we had another two, so we're at 14. And then one last inch of rain or 15. So we have a total of 15 inches of rain. I'm going to convert that to feet so I can have acre feet. This is 1.25 feet of rain that fell in the five hour storm. This is applied over the total watershed area of 100 acres and we get 125 acre feet of water. Okay, so 125 acre feet of flow will pass out of the outlet of the watershed if all of the rain that fell ends up in the watershed. But that's not actually what happens. The actual rainfall or the actual runoff in this example is maybe 60 acre feet, less than half of the amount of rain that fell. So the question that I want to ask and that we're going to answer in this module is where did the 65 additional acre feet go? If you're paying attention, you know that this module is about infiltration. You can probably guess that the rest of that water, that 65 acre feet, was lost to infiltration. But what exactly is infiltration? I'm going to define it a couple of ways. So first, we can define infiltration as the process by which water on the ground surface enters the soil. So it's a flux of water from the ground surface into the soil. A little more precise is it's the movement of water into the soil under the driving forces of grav gravity and capillarity. Okay, so gravity is pulling the water down into the soil and into the um, water table. When we talk about runoff, we're talking about direct runoff, and it is can be determined by the precipitation minus the infiltration. So it's also called the um, excess rainfall because it's not water that is drawn into the earth, it is water that runs over the surface of the earth. And you find that by default, really, by taking the amount of rain that you know is falls, and you subtract from that the infiltration. Okay, and I've written in here I and F because when we talk about precipitation and infiltration, we represent precipitation as I because of the intensity of the rain, and then we'll use an F for infiltration. Now I want to discuss some of the important terms to consider when we're talking about infiltration. 
So I messed up, so we're gonna skip that one and come back to it. So one of the things we're gonna to need to know is for any watershed or part of the watershed is the hydraulic conductivity. And so remember, hopefully, from your soils and geotech courses, that the saturated hydraulic conductivity describes the ease with which a fluid moves in the ground. And this has a units of inches per hour. In addition, we need to know the infiltration rate, also in inches per hour, we call this F sub C. And then we need to know the infiltration capacity, which is F sub P, and we use that P to mean ponding on the surface of the water, which we'll talk about more in a few minutes, also in inches per hour. And then last, used to be first, but I realized it was incorrect, is I, the rainfall intensity. This is also in inches per hour. So these are all in inches per hour. I just forgot to write the units for all of them. To further think about how infiltration and rainfall and hydraulic conductivity all work together, what I want you to do is look in your handout at the page that looks like this. And I want you to pause this video and try to draw the three different scenarios. What do you think? How fast do you think the water will infiltrate over time, over the duration of the storm, given these different scenarios? Okay, so really pause it, try to draw, and then come back and see how I did it, okay? All right, so I hope you had a, a chance to give this a try. And so we're gonna go through this together. So the first one we have when the rainfall intensity is less than the hydraulic conductivity. So this means that I, in inches per hour, the amount of rain that's falling, is less than the hydraulic conductivity, and this is true for the entire duration of the storm. So what's going to happen with that infiltration rate? In this case, the intensity of the storm starts in inches per hour, again, below the hydraulic conductivity, and it stays that for the entire time. So whatever the intensity of rainfall is, that is going to be how much infiltration occurs, okay? So it could be that the storm starts at some uh, intensity and then decreases and then increases. But as long as it is lower than the hydraulic conductivity for the entire duration of the storm, then that line will be constant and be below the um, where Fc is equal to Ks line. Okay, so in this second scenario, we have the rainfall rate exceeding the capacity of the soils to infiltrate from the very beginning of the storm. So I'm going to draw this in purple. And what is this going to look like? So in this case, right away, we have ponding. And what's going to happen is we're going to be able to start infiltrating at a greater rate. So we're going to be able to start way up here. And then over time, it's going to decrease and it's going to reach that hydraulic conductivity. So it's gonna look like this, okay? So that's in that purple. So my last scenario is when the rainfall rate is greater than the saturated conductivity, so greater than Ks. What's gonna happen in this case is that there's gonna start with a constant infiltration rate up to some time, and then it's gonna decrease exponentially until it reaches that hydraulic conductivity. And what is that point when it when it changes? We call that the time to ponding, T sub P. And it's how long it takes for there to be ponding on the surface of the of the ground surface. Um, before that time, all the water that hits is going to infiltrate into the ground. And then after you reach that time of ponding, that's when you start to get ponds or puddles um, in your soil and on your grass, right? And the water sits there and then infiltrates. And that, again, that's different than the purple, the second scenario, where right when it starts raining, the intensity is so great that ponding and puddles start forming instantaneously. So that sums up our introduction to inf infiltration video. I hope this was helpful to supplement the readings and there's a couple more videos with animations that might help you to understand this process a little more. Just scroll on down um, on this same Camino page and you should find those animations and I hope you enjoy this meme. I'm definitely looking like the one on the left 
as I make this video for you on Sunday night. All right, talk to you later.